Alright, in this review we're looking at a 2014 year model specialised Roubaix. So as you can see, um, the fork has snapped at the crown. So it was involved in an accident where the uh, the rider crashed into the back of, uh, back of a car, I believe, and it's sheared the crown right out of the fork, which is... Uh, it's taken a, quite a big force to do that. So um, the, the rider was a bit injured too, so um, he damaged his shoulders, I believe. Um, so he brought the bike in. Um, obviously the fork was, uh, was no good, but he didn't know what the damage to the frame was and whether the frame was repairable. He could just get a replacement fork and, uh, and happy days, get out riding again. But you can clearly see, see from the... Uh, in the fork here that there's a lot of broken fibers in a concentrated location there. Um, moving up the steerer tube and we can see the a bit of glass there to protect it but you can actually see the imprint of the stem uh, from the impact into the steerer tube and there's a bit of very localized delamination there but um, but it's really that crown which which copped the uh, the impact there so you can see this cracking there and some delamination uh, associated with that as well so that delamination sort of travels all the way through the back there so uh, yeah it's a bit of an unusual failure really for the fork to fail like that with just the, the fibers to shear like that so um, not that typical all right, so let's go and have a look at the frame. So you can probably guess that the the frame wasn't any good because it was chopped in half. It was if we if the frame would have survived and been good, we wouldn't have chopped the frame in half. So you can see the crayon mark there, where the yellow crayon where some delamination was found. Um, we'll show you a bit more of that uh, some detail of that uh, when we turn it over. Quite a nice looking frame, really. Um, you know, quite uh, straight lines, round tubes, not too many sort of tight tight corners. Um, you know, seem to be quite good. Yeah, uh, there we go. There's the uh, the date of manufacture. Um, pretty simple colour scheme too, silver and black. The uh, you know seat stays junction there. Um, moving down the seat tube again, no real sort of problems with that. Um, good solid hanger threaded bottom bracket in this one um, after all the disasters that they had with their press fit um, creaking and all that sort of stuff um, yeah again simple sort of lines yeah, not, no real problems there the only thing I sort of uh, you know, the whole sort of zerts thing I, I don't really see the point so much in that um, you know, you often do get moulding variations around that uh, that detail. So um, that's what it looks like on the outside, and uh, and it's quite a nice looking frame. Uh, to be honest, I, you know, I quite like those. Um, but let's have a look on the inside and see what we can find there. So those who you're familiar with the test, I generally start at the bottom bracket first. So let's have a look down there. Um, we'll bring the, the uh, camera in a bit. So we can see the threaded uh, threaded bottom bracket shell, which is bonded into a moulded sort of surround. So it's got a lot of adhesive bonding area. But there's also quite a lot of wrinkles. Um, here we go, look at some little voids where the, uh, the rib nut is. This often happens during drilling, but uh, in this case I think it was pre-existing. They look more like planar voids than a typical sort of delamination from drilling. Anyway, as we move back to the belt and bracket, you know, lots of resin pooling, um, wrinkle, wrinkles, um, and variations in the moulding through there. So, um, although the bottom bracket shell itself isn't going to come out because it's surrounded by a lot of material, um, I wouldn't be surprised if you get some cracking through there over time. There we've got some glass, um, sort of as they've put in a barrier ply around where the inserts are. So they've just done uh, sort of the whole area there, which is a bit unnecessary, really. But then uh, moving up into the headset. Now this is sort of where it gets really interesting because that's where the impact was, um, and you can clearly see some voids there. So 
you know, there's a nice big wrinkle right in the middle of the shot there and a void right next to it. So I'd suggest that those manufacturing flaws definitely contributed to the extent of the delamination and the damage uh, due to the impact. So those, you know, the wrinkle and the voids would have acted as initiation uh, points for the failure. So, um, you know, we can we can see that the um, the insert was disbonded sort of quite a way around through that section. So, um, you know, all all those wrinkles and it definitely contributed to the uh, to the extent of the damage that, which you can see there so the, those cracks sort of in the right hands of the screen and then they continue around the uh, the me metal uh, bearing race so going up to the top of the uh, the head tube again we can see more flaws through that region here so there's a uh, some planar voids at the front of the head tube uh, you can see them in that corner there and some wrinkles and uh, and other voids at the uh, the aft end of the uh, aft face of that head tube so um, again that's far from ideal and um, yeah, yeah I think it definitely contributed to to the extent of the damage um, it's just a random blob of adhesive um, and pooling sort of right in the middle of the tube there um, and a, a whole bunch of compaction variation indications there as well so the um, you know moving down the top tube it does get a little bit better sort of as you move down but um, the highest stress area is sort of typically at the, at the, at the junction so um, and that's where we're seeing the most variation Carrying down, um, here we go, there's some more glass fibre there, sort of where there's the insert and then uh, right into the junction with the seat tube and the top tube junction there we can see a, a void uh, right in that spot there, so yeah. I mean that's relatively minor but um, yeah, you'd avoid it if you could. Um, there's some glass in the seat, um, in the seat tube uh, it's that's an insert, and you can see there's voids in the adhesive in that uh, in that bond interface there. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect to see much of a problem from that. But having a glass is you know, having some glass there can reduce the corrosion, the corrosion, the galvanic corrosion. If you're running a a metal seat post and um, remove some of those problems. Moving down the C tube. Uh, we can see uh, again some variations right there, um, sort of where the rib nuts are, and then um, yeah, where the the fasteners mounting the hanger on. So you can see that one sort of in the middle on the slight left there, run is uh, the tail of the fastener the rivet hasn't even gone through the laminate, so there's nothing really holding that on. Um, there's also a um, co-molded metal plate. Uh, sandwiched between the laminate um, to help distribute load from that front derailleur hanger, which is a little bit unusual. It's sort of not not very common to see that. Hopefully, they're sufficiently isolated though to not be a corrosion problem in the future. Down to the bottom bracket junction again. Here we go. We have another look at that where we see those um, the, the wrinkles and the resin pooling, etc. Um, you know, particularly sort of in that chain stay junction you know we're getting some variations there and um, quite a large variation in, in the adhesive thickness too there it's um, it's on the lower face it's quite thick and then on the upper face it's the adhesive is sort of a bit thinner so um, there's plenty of adhesive there which is a good thing but um, look, yeah, there's no, it doesn't seem to be any voids right there but um, having variations in the adhesive thickness is, is a little bit less than ideal as well. I mean, I've obviously done that from a production point of view to account for variability in their in their processing. Um, the rest of the chainstay looks okay. Um, there is some bit of resin pooling sort of on that corner, um, and then they're using uh, metallic inserts in the dropout sort of to keep. Uh, 
I mean, that's, uh, you tend to have less problems w with those um, typically, so the faces don't seem to wear out as much. But then, yeah, when we got the uh, where the Zerts inserts is, you can see all the sort of variations in the in the moulding and um, wrinkles and folds and um, yeah, all the stuff going on in there and, and kinks in the in in the in the fibres. So um, yeah, how how much vibration it actually damps was probably a little bit debatable. Um, having a extra resin and the wrinkles probably does as much as the rubber uh, the rubber insert that they have in there so um, and then the brake bridge pretty solid solid old brake bridge there so no real problems there but sort of moving right up to the top of the seat state and there's uh, remnants of the bladder and some voids in there so where the, where the joint is so um, it's all getting fairly small in cross section so the bladder would have been trapped in there and sort of pinched and then not been able to get out not been able to pulled out uh, like they normally do and um, yeah and so that's just remained in there so um, again a little bit messy in there but uh, probably unlikely to see any problems with that or, um, even though it is a bit um, bit messy so that's a um, that's a look from the outside and the inside of a 2014 specialized Roubaix So there we have it, that's a specialised uh, Roubaix 2014 model cut in half. Um, I have to say I, I was a little bit disappointed in this one because we've, we've uh, had plenty of specialised bikes come through in the past and um, they've typically been much better than this one. So, um, which does highlight that um, you know, there are process variables which you know, even you can make, you might be able to make 95% of your frames floor free, but you, you still can't make them 100% floor free. So um, in this one, you know, we saw quite a lot of, uh, of resin pooling and some wrinkling and some voids, you know, those sorts of things. So, um, I, and as I, as I said, I do think that the voids in the head tube area and at the down tube junction there, um, those wrinkles and voids uh, contributed to the extent of uh, of of the damage. So um, yeah, so that's uh, that's a specialised 2014 Roubaix. Um, overall, um, you know, yeah, my opinion on these frames that you know they're typically pretty good. Um, this one wasn't so good. So. What we do have coming up for you next, or well, not next, but hopefully, <coughs> hopefully soon. Um, I'm really busy at the moment; it's just out of control. But um, hence, yeah, I haven't done that many videos recently. But I do have a S-Works uh, tarmac, which I've already cut in half. Um, so I'll do a review of this one as uh, as soon as I can. I've also got. Um, I've also got some other ones. I had a Cannondale, uh, 2017 model Cannondale, and what else in the corner? Oh, the Avanti Pista team. So that's uh, that's there all cut up um, as well. So I will get those out to you as soon as I can. Um, as I said, it's been really, really busy, and uh, yeah, we'll do what we can. Okay, till next time. See ya.